So I want to talk this morning about being validated, being validated. Recently, Pastor Tom and I had um, gone for an appointment with someone and we'd gone into one of those car parks and, um, you know, then we'd come out and we were, we were really running late because we had to wait. We had music practice, was getting ready and um, we went to go through, um, you know, got out the car park, went to validate our ticket and it just came back out and so you put it back in again and it came back out and we did that a few times and then he tore up to the next floor and tried it in that machine to get it to be validated and, and it wasn't and uh, so then he went up to the next floor and tried to get it validated and then he went up again to someone and they said, well, there should be someone there that if it's not working, you know, so he came down and it was a very expensive car park so straight away I was like, well, that's okay. Obviously, you're just going to be like, sometimes it happens at Jungle Up, you can just like leave and so... Don't try that, okay, because the problem is once you then pull into that bit for the gate to open, when the gate doesn't open, you're then stuck. So we then try it and it says account not paid, uh, not, ticket not validated. And so then we're trying to get everyone behind us to back up so we can get back out and, and, and park up. And, and um, you know, eventually they called security. And, and I'm also thinking we're paying... We're calling about $15 an hour at this car park and I'm thinking, but we were ready to leave. We'd waited over half an hour. I wanted to know how much we were going to get charged then if we were waiting. And so I realised then how important it is to be validated. When your ticket's validated, boom, the, the bar goes up and, and you're out of there. And so this morning I want to talk about how we can be that in life. You know, it's kind of the same. Lloyd made me this great little stamp, validated. Okay, we're all looking for someone to come and just stamp us. I'm validated. I'm valuable because somebody has gone, you're, you're validated. And we're waiting for that, that thing in life to, to open. You know, we're in a society where we're, we're chasing for people to validate what we're doing. I just need you to, to accept me and, and to think that I'm, I'm worthy and I'm, I'm worth something. And... I don't know about you, but I realised a long time ago, it's an ongoing search. Because even when you find someone who's like, yeah, you're the one, that doesn't mean that you're going to stay being the one. Because they have this other stamp called deleted, um, that they then stamp. And so the person that you felt like, wow, they really validate me. Sometimes it can be parents. We're looking for that stamp from our parents to go, yeah, I'm validated. And there are people here today whose parents have now pressed the deleted stamp. There are jobs that we wanted to get where we were like, yeah, I've, I've made it. And then all of a sudden feel that we're no longer e acceptable in those things. And, and so there comes in us a, a need and a, a desire to go through life going, I just want, I just want someone to, to validate me. I just want you know, someone to think that I'm valuable. And sometimes if you've grown up as a young person and feel like that hasn't been, you'll then look for it in, in someone else, in a, in a relationship of someone who goes, yeah, you're valuable, you're, you're validated and we can chase people in our hearts for love. We're searching for love and you find that person who, who loves you. But often that doesn't stay. Those friends, I was talking to one of um, a young girl, she came to see me on Friday and um, she's now... 23 and I asked her like do you still see all your friends from school you know they're the ones that validate you oh yeah we're glad you're here we're in a great group and she said no none of them I don't see any of them anymore and so I thought about her as that how, how meaningful it is at school because you've got so many friends Oh yeah, everybody likes you, but what about then when I leave school and I no longer that validated stamp seems to be wearing off you know, you tried not washing for a week just so someone could see that somebody thought I was valuable. But all of a sudden, it's no longer there. And we get disappointed. We get disappointed. I, I look at across at our, our young generation and I see young people so desiring to be validated by their friends like I've never seen before. Friday night, I was watching at Pulse and, and the need to have people just go, yeah, you're, you're something. You know, that, yeah, you're, you're important and they, they're desiring that so much. I don't know if it's because they feel they're, they're not getting that support at home or whether the enemy's just created a, a hunger in them that I just need someone to think that I'm important. I just need someone to see what I'm doing and validate my life and, and notice me. 
I noticed that in, in the process of, of media where we are, we are the most connected and yet disconnected society that's ever been around. We are the most connected and yet disconnected. We feel like, yeah, you know, I've got 375 friends on Facebook, but I'm not really sure if there's anyone else there in my life. We're the most in touch and yet out of touch. We're the most in touch and yet out of touch. We're constantly getting feedback from people and yet we feel like, do I really know there's someone there? Someone there who really validates me and, and, and thinks that, that I'm important. We spend hours on, on computers looking for friends that we can't see while sitting next to people that we can. But I just, you know, it's amazing when you go out for tea and stuff, you know, and there's people there, you know, um, on their phones um, waiting to see if somebody, I just want to show, we're here at this restaurant or we're here with this person or here I'm with, smile family, I'm with my family because really it's obvious then that the validation of the person that I'm with doesn't seem deep enough because I need somebody else to notice what's going on. The need for that social media to go, I just need people to know. So I'm not actually talking to you but just smile so I can show everybody because I need that stamp of validation. It's causing people, young people, to get into relationships a hundred times earlier than they ever did with a need to be validated. I, I need a boyfriend. I'm a kids club. They start talking about their, their need for a boyfriend. One of my girls told me recently that she had a boyfriend, but she dumped him. And she's like about eight. And I said, really, why? She said, well, because he dumped me. So I thought, fine, I'm going to dump you back. <laughs> I don't think she got the, the gist of that. But I watch this young generation, I just need this guy. They're so physical with one another. We, we've got so many areas that are extended in that physical side because I'm just looking for you to validate me. And yet in the process, there's a lot of hurt because that boy that will hug and love you now doesn't always hug and love you later. That girl that said great things about you isn't always there later. And yet our society is so much like that. We're looking for, for people when we're, we're posting things. It's, it's like, it's not so much about what I think about me, but what do you think about me? Instead of me looking in the mirror, I'm looking into to Facebook going, what do you think of what I'm wearing? And how many people go, validated, that is so good what you're wearing. That is so good what you're doing. So I'm no longer looking in the mirror, but I'm looking into the media going, do you validate me? Do you like what I'm wearing? Do you like where I'm going? Do you like how I look? Even if I've got to like look up in the sky, I found out later why we do that. That's so all the wrinkles flow this way. It's horrific the other way, okay? If you want to get your kids off mouldy media, just start posting safe selfies that way, okay? And your kids will be like, oh my gosh, that is so scary, you know? We can... Um, you know, uh, someone was showing me this week how you can like put filters on and do all this stuff so you don't even look like you really look. Okay, because really, that way you'll like me more because I don't actually want you to see how I look. And for everyone here at the moment without Facebook, you're like, I oh, know, that's just so bad. That's just so bad. And yet, we're exactly the same. It don't matter whether you own Facebook or not, we are still constantly looking for validation. Let me tell you what job I've got. Let me tell you, do you want to come and see my, my new car that I just bought? Do you want to see the things? Most of the time when we're buying clothes or, or houses or cars or whatever, it's really a desire for somebody else to see what you've got. Because I just want you to approve of me. We've got people on diets who don't feel like dieting because they want to be validated by somebody else. I want you to like me though. I'm quite happy being this size, but if you would like me to be skinnier, if you would like me to earn more money, if you would like me to do this because I just need a stamp of validation to show that I'm important to you. No matter what I'm like, what, what you think is going to be so much more important than what I think. And yet what we need to do is develop a confidence in who we are in him. I want to show you some of this in the word of God. If we turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 we're going to look at first. Luke chapter 19.
to get to a point in our life where I'm not worried whether you like it. I'm not checking to see how many people looked at my photo, noticed my photo. Are you going to answer me? I just, I saw the bubbles. I know you, I know you heard my message, Connor. You just haven't, I just need you to answer me. I just need you to approve of what I'm doing in the places that I'm at. This was a guy, it's a great story. In Luke chapter 19, it says this, verse 1. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man there named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was very rich. So already we see someone here who in a way was validated by a society. The Bible says he was a chief tax collector. He was not just a tax collector. He was a chief tax collector and he was very rich. Anyone who's already submitted your tax returns, you already know we don't really like those kind of people, okay? So if you work at the tax department, we're really sorry, but we don't like you, okay? Because you take our money that we earned and I don't know, I've never had anyone go, I really feel like, yeah, that's just so fair. You know, we have to give them so much money and, you know, you're waiting. Now you can do it online, which I don't know if that's better or worse. And you're like calculating, okay, I paid $15,000 in tax. I should get, I don't know, I reckon I should, 13, no, let's just say 12 just to make, what, I get $123 back. Are you serious? Do it again, do it again. Just re-log everything in, you know. And we, yeah, it must be something wrong with the, with the system. But this guy, although he wasn't liked by some, the Bible says that he was a chief tax collector. So in a lot of ways, he would have felt like, I've got it. I've been validated. You know, because it's you poor people who don't like paying your taxes that have the issue. Because the people at the tax department do not have an issue taking 20% off you and do not have a problem giving you $123 return because they feel so validated. They're validated. And the Bible says he was very rich. Unlike our tax department, which I'm sure doesn't happen, unfortunately the tax collectors in those times took a little bit for themselves, a little bit to put in, a little bit for themselves. And so he was very, very rich. So in his life, he should have felt valuable and he should have felt validated. But it says this in verse 3, And he sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not because of the crowd and because of his short stature. It's interesting that he sought to see who Jesus was. Maybe that's here today. You don't actually kind of want to get involved in Jesus, but you just, I'll just, I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see what it's all about. I'm interested to, to hear. And so, you know, maybe you got here today and, you know, you thought there was, we had a guy at the door a while. I just want to, just want to sort him and see what he's like and see what it's all about. So I believe with all of my heart that although he seemed so validated and so rich and had such a good position, there must have been something lacking inside of him something that he was searching for. I believe that any person that comes to church, you might come today and think I've come because someone said there was a free lunch. They forgot this bit that we've got to put up with. I thought it was just the kids were singing and we got free lunch. But I believe in my heart that what happens is God draws you. God draws you and there's an area in our life where we want to be validated. We want to know what am I here for? What, what is the reason about my life? It says, so he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see for he was going to pass that way. And then Jesus came to his place and he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for I must come to your house today. I love so many of those things because I tell you what, when you don't really realise that you're validated in a good way, when you realise that you are never going to get it in any guy, in any girl, in any job, in any finances, in any, anything in life, it's going to cause you to run ahead. It's going to cause you to seek Jesus. There's got to be something more. I know for my past there was lots of things that I, I did that were good things that I thought if I just did this. See, when I, when I then qualified for this, and do you know what? It didn't matter how far I got in life. I just never seemed to feel like that was enough. If I, just, if I just do this then, if I just have this. And I remember like thinking, like having so much and yet still feeling that void inside me. I remember meeting a lady who was a Christian and, you know, they didn't seem to have as much as what I had and yet there was something in them. I knew that they felt validated. What is it that they've got? And so I was interested in, in seeking after who Jesus was. I want to I know. And so Zacchaeus had to make an effort to climb up into a tree. And I love it that it says, you know, you need to picture there are thousands of people there all crowding around, so many that Zacchaeus can't even get in there. 
And yet Jesus walks right by him. And the Bible says, and he looks up into the tree. What was he doing looking up in the tree? Because what I love is when you desire to be validated in the right way, God's looking for you more than you're looking for him. And he comes past and he goes, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. I'm coming to your house today. Do you know you might be a Christian here today, but you still need to get to that point. Because even as Christians, we can still be trying to get validated by the world. Do you like these new jeans I've got? Do you like this new top I've got? Do you like this? Do you like that? I just need your approval. No, I just need your approval. I just want to know, Jesus, that you validate me, that you see that I'm important. And Jesus will say the same to you. You know what? I'm coming to your house today. I'm coming to your house today. I love it that it goes on to say this. So imagine how Zacchaeus felt. You know, maybe you're here today and, and you're a visitor and you thought you would just come and just see what it's all about. Your friend said, I go to church. And, and how freaked out you would be if we actually, so I'm trying to find someone that's new today. And I go, oh, so we'll come over to your house this afternoon for lunch. You're like, what? That wasn't part of the deal. I just wanted to see what it was about. Yeah. And we'll bring our sleeping bags if that's okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, could someone, one of the ushers just grab that lady in the light blue, could we grab her address? Um, because we're coming to your house, we don't eat much. And so, but that's what I love about God, because he just sees you and he goes, I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to come to your house. And so, I, I guess the guy is freaking out. It says, and Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 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 I would give up to half of my good, oh, sorry, I have give, sorry, I, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Now, I've always wondered whether Zacchaeus is saying, and I've heard different sermons on it, like when he knew Jesus was coming, he was saying, I will. But actually, my Bible says, I do. He, he actually says, I do these things. I think when you come into the presence of God, you want to tell him all the things that you do. Well, actually, I'm really good. I, I'm, I, it's my first time I've been at the church, but I've been at a soup kitchen before I did a soup kitchen. And another time I helped out at a Christmas. But I just want to tell you what, what I do. What I do. Just so you'll validate me. Because I know in life what I need is for you to validate me. I just know you're like everybody else. And if I can show you how good I am and how I'm not really a bad person. But don't visit the lady next door because, whoa, she's a bad one. Okay. But you just validate me, Jesus. You just validate me, Jesus. And Jesus says this to him. Today salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. And the son, and the son of man has come to seek and save that which is lost. I love that. Here's Zacchaeus trying to list all the reasons why he should be validated and, and why God should love him and why Jesus should be okay to come to his house. And he goes, salvation has come to your house today because whoever calls on the name shall be saved, not by whatever you do. There is nothing you need to do to be validated by Christ apart from to choose him. So here's Zacchaeus thinking, I know how this system works. I know what I've got to do now for Jesus to love me more. And I think in the church sometimes we forget that, that Jesus is just going, I want to come to your house. Yeah, well, I, I normally read my Bible every Monday, but Tuesdays I don't because that's like a really busy... He goes, salvation has come to your house today because whoever calls on the name of the Lord, because you are a son of Abraham, then you are validated. I love that for him. He would have had this amazing seal on Zacchaeus. You are validated. You are validated by the King of Kings. Do you know the key thing here, I believe, is this. It's in the tree. Because he was in a tree called the sycamore tree. Until you get sick of more of what you're at, you'll never climb up. I thought that was very good. I was like, that is so powerful. Why name it? A sycamore tree. See, while ever you just think you're dilly-dally on the end and still get everyone else's approval, do you like my hat, do you like my clothes, do you like my shoes, do you like my kids, do you like my husband, do you like... No, 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 no. Climb the sycamore tree. I'm sick of any more of this. I'm sick of checking Facebook to see if you like my photo. I'm sick of checking whether she's going to sit next to me or someone else. I'm sick of seeing what everyone else is doing. Do you like this, do you like... You know what, Jesus? I just want to see you. I want to seek after you and know with all of your heart that Jesus is just going to go validated. Yeah, but I've just got to fix the things right. I used to think I have to fix the things before I came to church and then realize, you know what, from the day I walked in with the terrible, terrible things, which we won't even talk about, I was doing, it amazed me Jesus went validated, validated. And I thought, well, he certainly can't be a prophet if he doesn't know what I'm up to. But then realizing he does, he does church and he validates us. And we just have to get to a point where I go, I'm sick of any more of this. 
I'm sick of any more of this. Let's look at another story very similar. I know there's stories that you know well, but I'm hoping I'm going to bring something out for you to realize that you can be sitting here today, Christians saved 20 or 30 years, but still looking to be validated by people rather than validated by Christ himself. In Luke chapter 15, verse 11, Luke chapter 15, verse 11, it says, there was a certain man who had two sons and and the youngest of them had said to his father, Father, give me the portion of our goods that falls to me. So he divided them, um, they divided his livelihood. And not many days after the younger son had gathered it all together, he journeyed to a far country. So what happens here? The son is looking for his validation in his wealth. He knows that when his father dies, he's going to get this money. So he's like, you know, Dad, you should just give it to me now. My kids have tried that one. You know, you guys, you could just give it to us now and you could see us enjoy the money, not. Um, but the father says, okay, that's fine. And then see, once the son got the money, at that stage the son had never intended to leave. But obviously in his little country town that he was, even when he suddenly had wealth, I still don't feel validated by you guys. Can't you see I've got money here? Because there was no reason for him to leave. But he then takes his money and he goes to another place and he goes, ah, oh, see here. And as we read the word, they did validate it. The Bible said that he lived worthless living, which basically he spent it on prostitutes and all sorts of things and he partied up and he had a whole, I've got a whole heap of friends here. See, because when you've got money, you'll have a lot of friends. And, oh, they all loved me and validated me. High five, you're the best. They had me. You, I was on Facebook, out with the prodigal, you know, uh, prodigal's my peep. You know, they were just like, all these things. He was just in the in crowd. But all of a sudden, the Bible says that the money ran out. The money ran out. See, when my validation is from people, it's going to run out. It can be nice and bright one day but slowly run out. And all of a sudden, there's no one there left for him. And the Bible says that he ends up serving in the, in the pig pen. Another revelation that I've heard so many people talk about how he ends up just eating the pig food. Well, actually, that's not what the Bible says. It actually says that they wouldn't even give him the pig food. I read that last night. They wouldn't even give him the pig food. I'll just read it in case you've not read this part of the Bible before. Okay, so he goes off to, it says, and when he had spent all that, he arose, um, there was a severe famine in the land, and he began to want. And when he had, he had joined himself to the citizens of that country, that's what you do, trying to get acceptance from people, he was, they sent him to feed in with the pigs. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that were the swines ate, but no one gave him anything. But I love this, the next verse, but when he came to his senses... When he came to his senses, he says this, I will arise and I will go to my father's house. I will arise. You know, a lot of times we think the prodigals are those that aren't in the church. You might be thinking, I wish such a body was here because they left church. And do you know a prodigal can sit in the church? Because a prodigal is just someone who's backslidden in their heart. You can come and go through all the motions and know that's right because the service coordinator will validate that I was here on Sunday. I'm here every Sunday. You can check the role. I go to life group every week, but I can still be a prodigal. I can still be a prodigal son because I'm so convinced that my validation will come through people. But when I decide to realize, you know what? The world can offer me nothing. See, sometimes we can be in church but still living in the world, in that pig pen. And there's a time and a season right now you might feel validated by the people that you're with, but it never lasts. And so he decides to go back to the father. And I love it. He's kind of thinking, okay, so what I'll say, I'll say to him like, I'm really, really sorry and, and I was unworthy and um, I'll just like help as one of your hired hands. See, this is still validation. I'll just, I'll tell him I'll do this. And, and so if he just does this for me, then I'll do this for him. And I love it. The, it says this, that the father comes running. <laughs> the father comes running with his stamp. Get here, Dylan. I'm just going to, no, but I just want to tell you what I'll do for you, Jesus, because I'm sorry for, no. And the father comes running and he goes, you know what? Yeah, but I just want to tell you, no, nah, you're validated. But I just want to tell you what I've been doing while I've, I've been God. I just want to tell you why I wasn't at youth on Friday and what I, no, you're validated. You're validated. Because it's him that makes us worthy. The Bible says this, that when he comes, the father arises and he takes to him his robe and his sandal and his rings. And he goes, you're worthy. 
The Father dresses the Son. The Father will dress us because we are worthy. We have to know that it's only in him you will ever be accepted. I want to encourage you, if you're in a relationship or seeking a relationship, your validation will never come from a person. Will never come from a person. It might seem time and temporary. It'll never come from material possessions. It's great to have those new things. But if my desire is so that you will accept me, I'm going to go through life asking, do you like the fact that I've had my hair cut short now? Okay, she just said, I've got to find someone. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The King of Kings validates me. The Lord of Lords validates me. Jesus Christ said, you know what? Even while you were the wickedest sinner you could have been, I'll die for you on the cross. Not once I cleaned my act up. Not once I cleaned my act up. We're so worried about who's going to come. I, I love that when we're looking at, if we just flick back to, um, oh, where was I reading? Even when they're, they're coming to supper, here it says, then, then the tax collectors, in verse chapter 15, then the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him um, to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. You know what I thought? I'd like our church to say, this church receives sinners and eats with them. That's why we've got a fellowship lunch. Welcome sinners, come on in. Because Jesus validated you. The biggest thing that keeps people out of church is that they feel unworthy. They feel like they're not good enough. And Jesus is saying, Jesus knew everything and he's going, yeah, come, I'll eat with you. Come and I'll eat with you because he's the one that's going to validate us. He's the one that's going to, to be there for us. When I get to a point where I go, you know what? I just don't want to do this anymore. I just don't want to do this anymore. So I want to encourage you this morning. If you are a Christian here today, and you're going to have to be really honest with yourself because you can sit there and think about the things you don't have or that's okay because I went off Facebook or I never. But if you are looking to be validated by people, if your desire is to post, I mean, even then we pretend that it's not. I mean, I've got to think about why I posted on multimedia. It has to be because I want you. Why would I post what I eat apart from wanting you to think it's awesome? Please validate me, validate. Why would I post what I'm... I'm not saying don't post them, but don't always look for that. Don't always look for that. There's nothing wrong. I have Facebook myself. I have a car. I have a house. But I'm not looking for you to validate it. I'm not looking for those, those things. I'm not looking for friendships where people will go, yeah, you're, you're valuable, because there's going to be other times where they won't. And each one of us here today are going to have to get to a point where we go, you know what? I'm sick of more of this. I'm sick of more of this. I might be the chief tax collector. People might be looking at me thinking I've got it all together, but I haven't, Lord. And so I'm going to climb a sick of more tree. Sick of more, Lord. I don't want, I don't want my life to be like this. I want it to change. Maybe you've never asked Jesus into your heart today. Maybe you're just here as a, a visitor. I don't know who invited you, but I want to encourage you. I spent the first 28 years of my life chasing to be validated by people. If I just do this, if I just do that, and nothing I did was enough. I don't care whether you're 20 years old or you're 80 years old, you're going to find it's never enough. And I want to encourage you today. You know, maybe someone will talk to you today and just go, you know what, maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. Maybe I just need to seek out who Jesus is. The best thing I ever did in my life was to turn it over to Jesus, was to actually go, okay, well, I've tried it all my way. I've done everything that should make you feel like I've made it, and I still don't quite feel. I don't know if you realise the enemy just keeps moving the end line. Just when you think, when I've done that, then I've made it. When I've done that, what? And the light, we just never seem to, to get it. Maybe you're like the prodigal and you just need to decide, you know what, I'm tired of living in the pig pen. I'm tired of living with a bunch of people who just snort at me and, and never accept me and, and basically use and abuse me. I'm going to choose to return to the only person who will ever truly validate you. Do you know the best thing about Christ, the day you ask Jesus into your heart and he validates you, he never, ever takes this off. He never takes this off. What could you do that would be so bad that he would rub that off? Nothing. Nothing. That's why he said that he died for you while you were still a sinner. 
and that it says that once, once you're in, he will never leave you or forsake you. So he will go with you to those places and he'll be very disappointed because he will be sitting next to you going, this is not the answer. This boy really doesn't love you. Get away from him. This girl doesn't really love you. This job isn't going to give you everything. You just gave up meeting with me to get this and it's never going to be enough. And know for sure the day that you do that, he goes, validated. 